<laughs> All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about Flexbox versus Grid. And when do you use one or the, or the other? Are they replacement? Do they go together? Can you use them together? Um, and sort of my idea here is I'm just going to kind of give you a few points about uh, using one or the other. And then we're going to go through, I think, about nine or 10 examples of different UI patterns that you might want to do. Um, and we're, I'm going to show you how I would implement them either in Grid or in Flexbox, where it's the case that only Flexbox can only do a specific thing. So as in general, Flexbox, sorry, in general, Grid can do everything that Flexbox can do. Some people are of the mindset that um, Flexbox is for one dimensional, where you lay things out on an X or a Y axis, and, and CSS Grid is for a multi dimensional when you lay things out on X and a Y grid. But that that I don't think that really holds any water because CSS Grid is also really good at aligning things on an X or a Y axis. So, um, People, you might prefer Flexbox because you already know it, or uh, currently browser support for Flexbox is much better than Grid, although that will soon be a thing of the past. Um, the syntax, some people might like the syntax. It, it can get a little bit hairy with the repeat and the min max, but I think once you've done six or seven examples with that, it's it starts to to set in. Um, one big benefit for Flexbox over Grid is that they can be transitioned, meaning that if you want to animate a flex grow value and you want it, something to get bigger, in my JavaScript 30 course, we made an image gallery with this and it's got a really nice animation to it. Um, you can't currently transition anything except for Grid Gap on Firefox in, in, in CSS Grid. So uh, th that's a, a huge benefit for, for Flexbox. Um, pros for Grid is um, it's much more consistent across all the browsers and there's not as many bugs as Flexbox has. Um, it, you really only need to learn one thing. So if you're trying to be consistent on your team, um, that's good. Um, and then also if you're designing something on a single axis and then you decide you want to wrap that into multiple rows, um, it's very easy to sort of just add more rows with, with CSS Grid. So um, let's just go through a whole bunch of different examples that we have. Um, some things that you used to be able to do in Flexbox, I'm going to show you how to do in Grid, and some things that you can do in Flexbox that are just not possible at all uh, in Grid. So let's start the first one, with this, which is axis flipping. Um, and that is with S Flexbox, you have the ability to uh, flip the flex direction from column to uh, row. So column to row, column to row, column to row. So let's open up access flipping start. And let's take a look at what we got here. It's got a button that when you click it, it runs this function and it simply just toggles a class of flipper uh, on this div of the class of flipper. So let's open up start. Good. Then we will grab our flipper and say display grid. We'll add some grid gap. 20 px, and then we'll say grid template columns, repeat, auto fit, min max, 50 px, and 1fr. You gotta be able to spell display right. There we go. Okay, so that's on. And then when I flip it, what I want to do, you see how it's adding and removing this class of flip. I'm going to say when the flipper has also a class of flip. Uh, how do you switch it from column to row? Well, you can just make it one column. So grid template column. 1fr. Mm, that should do it. Now I click on it and it's going to flip it uh, from one to another. Um, the one thing you cannot do is, is Flexbox has the ability to do uh, row reverse and column reverse, which would take the items and flip them in the opposite direction. Um, you can do that with the order property, but that would be really tedious assigning a order property to each one. But in this case, you can flip it over. And what's neat about that is you can also, if you wanted to, you could just add another column. And then when you flip it, you can flip it from columns to, uh, I guess, rows of, of two columns. So pretty neat there. So that's the first one. Um, let's move on to the second one, which is controls on the right. And that looks like something like this, where maybe you have some media and uh, you've got some buttons on the right here. And then whatever is left is going to be for the title of the actual song. So let's look at how we can code that up in grid controls on the right start. Here we go. So I'm instead of uh, assuming that there's going to be three buttons, because I, I don't want to have to do that with Flexbox, you could just apply a flex one to this and then it would fit it up. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to make a one column grid. So grid template column one FR. And we are also, I guess we also have to display grid on it. 
Good. Now, now we got a bit of a problem here because uh, our additional items are now being added as rows instead of to the right here. So what we can do is we can change that with our grid auto flow. So grid auto flow, we'll change that to column and then they will just line up nicely on the end. So if I were to turn this on each of these tracks, you'll see that our actual column is number one here. And then any additional items get that get thrown our way, they're not added as new rows, they're added as new columns. So if there, if we were to increase the amount of buttons on one of these items right here, you'll see that they just nicely stack up to the right. And then the additional room is used up for the title of a song. And that's great because if I were to then uh, resize the width of something like this, then you can see that well, obviously at a certain point it gets brutal, but you the text starts to wrap onto to new lines as it starts to run out of space. Let's move on to the next one, which is uh, flex on item. So here is uh, something that I, I do quite often, and it's uh, making media controls for a video player where you have a video player and this is, might be like a scrubber bar that shows you how far along you are. Uh, and then you have buttons for pausing and playing, for speeding up or slowing it down for turning captions on and for downloading the video. So the way I like to do this is just have the buttons take up as much space as they need. And then whatever we have left, in this case, a scrubber will just take up that much value. So if there's a lot of room, the scrubber will be really wide. And if there's not a lot of room, the scrubber will be a little bit more shallow. So let's open up that flex on item start. And this is a case where I prefer Flexbox for this, and I'll show you why. So if I were to, well, I gotta open up the starter files for this. Take our controls. So we have this controls and we have all of our items in there. So I will say display flex. And immediately that's going to uh, make the container here uh, a flex container. And then each item inside of it will be a flex item. And I have put a min width of 100 px on that scrubber. But what I want is I want the scrubber to take up the rest of the room. So I could just go to the scrubber and say just flex one. And that will flex grow because there's extra space. It will grow to take up the, the rest of the space. And then I could also say, I think it is align items center there that will vertically center it. You see it's perfectly centered. Now that's great. If I were to do that in grid, how would I do it? Let me comment that out, comment that out. I would have to do display grid and then grid template columns, auto, 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 one FR, auto, auto. And that will give me the same layout because I want these all these buttons to take up the same amount, then the actual scrubber, and then auto auto. And that's that's a little bit brittle because what if I were to delete one of the buttons? Now all of a sudden the thing that is uh, getting bigger is one of the buttons, not the actual value. So you can see the value in being able to apply the flex directly to the element. And that way, if the order or the number of items in your flex container changes, um, you aren't screwed like I, I am in this case. So Flexbox for the win on that one. Let's move on to the next one, which is perfectly centered. And this is something that you do a lot. You have like a height of a hero or something, and then you have any number of items and you want to perfectly center those in the middle. So we'll open up perfectly centered start. And if I, let's try, let's try perfectly center it in Flexbox first. So we'll say display flex. And now, okay, now it's turned it into rows. So we have to change the flex direction. So flex direction column. There we go. And then I would say justify content center, I believe, and align items center. Bam, perfect. That's exactly what I want. Uh, I did that in Flexbox in four values there. Now let's see how do I do it in grid. So we will display grid on that. And then we will justify content center that will bring it into the center and align items center. There we go. That's actually not what I want. I goofed it up. I think it is justify items center. Yeah. And then align items. So this will still um, fill up the entire uh, grid, right? So the, the grid is obviously 200 pixels high. And if I made that 400 pixels high, that it would be even bigger. But what I want is them to be perfectly centered in here. I don't want them to be this big. So I think that is align content because 
we want to pop it in the middle. There we go. And you can see that uh, the rows themselves are not stretching now. They are just being as big as the content needs to be. So I don't know. That that works perfectly in both of them. I wouldn't sweat the extra line of Flexbox. Um, you can make your decision on uh, which one is, is better for you in that case. Um, Self-control. This one is pretty neat. This is one that is only doable in grid. So if you want to align something in all four corners, when would you ever do this? I don't know, but uh, let me, I'm just going to show you the benefit of having the justify self and the align self value. So open up self-control start and we'll grab this corners. I've got display grid already on there and we're going to make a four by or two by two grid. So grid template columns, uh, one FR, one FR. And I can also do grid template rows, one FR, one FR. Similarly, you can also just do grid template as a shorthand. And what that will allow us to do is we can just put a forward slash one FR, one FR in there. And that's this exact same thing. You can open it up in your dev tools and inspect it. And you'll see that grid template is just shorthand for grid template areas, grid template rows and grid template columns. Good. Now I want to put them in the top right hand corner. By default, they are stretching. So we'll go on to here and we'll align items and that will put them at the bottom. Um, and then I also want to uh, justify items end there. So that puts them in the bottom right hand corner of each of them. Now I want to override it for uh, the first one and the second one. I want to stick them to the top. And then for the first one and the third one, I want to stick them to the left. So I've got these selectors here. So we can use align self start and that will put them at the top. So we have that in Flexbox. But what we don't have is justify self. Uh, the ability to do it on the other axis when we want to do that as start. So that will have full control over overriding anything that we've set on the container. We can override them on each of the individual items. Good, good, good. What else do we got here? Self-control stacked layout. Okay, so this is another one that is only doable in Flexbox. Um, so one of the, I guess, downsides or one of the just the ways that grid works is that uh, your columns are rigid, meaning that you, you can't have rows that are uh, different sizes. And if you wanted to attain something like this, you would have to do manual spanning uh, across all of the different items. So if we look at stack layout start so it will go on to our stacked and say display flex and that will put them all in one line but i've set them to be 30 percent width so they should be able to wrap so we'll say flex wrap wrap and that will put them each on their own line um, now if i want to make them like we had we just say justify content space between or space around and that will stack them exactly how we want with the space in the middle. One downside we have with um, Flexbox, if I were to take that off, is that there is no concept of flex gap or just gap at all. And we uh, hopefully we will be getting that in Flexbox because um, using margin on flex items is not ideal because it, it leads to uh, unintended margin on the right and the left. And then you have to get into negative margins to take that off. So it's not great. But that is one for Flexbox can only do that. Um, unknown content size. So uh, if we have something like this where uh, you don't know how wide it is and you want to put it in the middle, how do we do that with grid? Well, we'll go to unknown content size, start, display grid. We do know how many columns we have in this case. So we can say grid template columns. We can just repeat for five and we can make the size of them auto. And that will just auto size them based on the content. You see the image loaded there and it reflowed itself. Um, and then if we wanted to, to center it, we just have to simply justify content, center, and everything is centered. We'll put some grid gap, 20px on that. And we're in good shape. So if you ever do know the amount of columns that you have, but do not know how much content will be inside of each one, then that is a, a nice little use case for that. Um, unknown number of items. So this is one where you just want them to take up as much room as you want, but you don't know how many columns there are going to be. So I'm in this little example where 
uh, we can keep adding items and then once you hit that min max value they'll just start to wrap so let's open up unknown number of items start in here we'll say display grid grid template columns we're going to repeat auto fit and then we're going to use our min max that we learned about earlier to be at a minimum 50 pixels and at a maximum 1fr and we'll put some grid gap 20px inside of it good and now as i add more items they will automatically reflow and this auto fit algorithm is going to fit as many as it can but once they are 50 pixels and they cannot fit anymore they will then start to wrap so that's one that i really really like um, using i use flexbox for that a lot just to fit it all onto to one line um, the problem with that is as soon as you started to wrap with flexbox you got some weird margin and everything didn't line up perfectly so in this case i really like grid for that i think we got um, a couple more here unknown number of items one more variable widths on each row so if you have something like this uh, where this one is really really long and then these ones aren't this is not something that grid can do because you notice that uh, the the items are not perfectly lining up unless you were to manually span each of them, which you cannot. Uh, Flexbox is a better use case for this. So let's open up the variable widths each row. Display flex. Good. Flex wrap wrap. Good. And then you see that like if I put a border on here, the flex container only goes this far. So we can go to each of them and put a flex value of one on it. And then it's just going to fit it in uh, as perfectly as we want. And here's a good example of the, the margin error that I was talking about. Often what you want is you want your items to butt up on the left and the right. You don't want that. So if you were to take the margin off, they butt up perfectly, but you put it on, then they go off. So maybe you do like margin dash right 10 PX. And then it takes it off here because you don't know what the you don't know that Snickers is the last one in the actual row. And as it gets bigger, it's going to to reflow that. So uh, what people have done is uh, they would do something like this and then they would take the actual container and let's say margin dash right negative 10 PX or something like that to bump it up over to the, the right 10 pixels and that will hopefully line it up with your whatever is whatever content is above it. So um, hopefully we're going to get flex gap or just gap in general in CSS and that would that would fix a lot of those issues. So I hopefully those were some good examples. Hopefully you learned a, a few things here or there about when to use Flexbox or Grid. I would definitely whenever you encounter something that you can use Grid or Flexbox for, try to lay it out in both ways and see which one works better for your use case. You are always going to be used Flexbox and Grid. I think you might, my own opinion, you might be uh, using Grid a little bit more than Flexbox once the browser support gets there, but um, don't take just my word for it. Uh, don't say things like, single access and double access or whatever, uh, actually try it yourself and, and come to your own conclusions and write a blog post and uh, become a thought leader or something like that. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one.